Today we're going to talk about the mean value theorem, a classic theorem in calculus that has widespread applications to a lot of neat areas in mathematics. So the theorem states that if you have a function f that's continuous on the closed interval a, b, and is differentiable in the open interval, so it's differentiable in between a and b, then if you look at the slope of the line between the points a, f of a, and b, f of b, that slope being f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that's actually going to equal the slope of the tangent to the curve at some point c in between a and b, so in the open interval a and b. So we see, for example, in this picture, at this point c, we have the tangent whose slope looks like the slope between a and b. So in other words, we have a point c in between a and b, so that f prime of c is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now you might ask yourself, why does this theorem actually even hold in the first place? And a way to see it is to change your frame of reference and prove what's called Rolle's theorem, where we sort of rotate the picture in a certain way, like this, so that a and b's function values are the same. Then really what we're doing is proving that between a and b there's a point c whose function value's derivative is zero. Um, and that happens essentially because we have a minimum or a maximum in the interval between a and b. All right, so this gives us a sense of what the mean value theorem is and why it actually holds. So now we're gonna see widespread examples. And the first one is how the mean value theorem can actually establish inequalities like the following, that the absolute value of sine a minus sine b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a minus b. So we're gonna let f of a be sine a, f of b be sine b. So we have a function that we're applying a and b to. In general, we're considering the function f of x that's equal to sine of x. And without loss of generality, we'll assume that b is less than a. You can switch um, either direction and you're fine. So this function on the closed interval b to a is continuous and on the open interval b a is differentiable. So if we look at the difference f of a minus f of b, which is actually what's on the left-hand side, kind of, when we divide that by a minus b, we're going to get the derivative of f at some point c in the open interval from b to a. Now f prime at c is actually the cosine of c, and that value is between negative 1 and 1, because that's the range of cosine. So, if we actually take absolute values of the left-hand side, we'd get the absolute value of sine of a minus sine of b all over a minus b is equal to the absolute value of cosine of the c value that we picked in the open interval between b and a, and that's less than or equal to 1. So if you multiply then by the denominator, we get exactly the inequality we wanted at the top. So this is a prototypical, prototypical example of using the mean value theorem to establish inequality upper bounds for a given function. Now we're going to move on to see a different application where we use the mean value theorem to actually estimate differences of numerical values without having to use the calculator whatsoever. What we're going to do is show that the square root of 66 minus 8 is strictly between 1 ninth and 1 eighth. Now you can actually do things like rationalize the expression that we have to get this, but we want to see how the mean value theorem can give it to us. So we're going to let f of x be the square root of x, so that we have the square root of 66 is f of 66. And 8 then is f of 64, because the square root of 64 is 8. So we have the difference of f of 66 and f of 64. So we're going to consider this function f of x, the square root of x, on the closed interval from 64 to 66. f is continuous on this interval and is differentiable on the open interval 64 to 66. So there's a point c between 64 and 66 so that the difference f of 66 minus f of 64 divided by 66 
minus 64 is going to equal f prime at c. And f prime at c is 1 over 2 times the square root of c. The reason being that our function is root x and its derivative is half x to the negative half, which is 1 over 2 root x. Okay, so let's piece all these things together. In the denominator, we have a 2 in this fraction on the left. The numerator is the thing that we're actually interested in bounding above and below. It's the square root of 66 minus 8. Now we're left with this 1 over 2 root c. But we know that this quantity, square root of 66 minus 8, is going to equal 1 over root c as a consequence because we have that 2 in the denominator. And we know that c itself is between 66, 64 and 66. Okay, so can we use that somehow to estimate 1 over root c? Well, 66 is bounded above by 81. So 8 is less than root c is less than 9. And reciprocating, we get 1 8 is greater than 1 over root c is greater than 1 over 9. And since 1 over root c is the quantity we're interested in in the middle, when we take these two underlying expressions together, we get exactly the inequalities that we wanted in the first place. So this is just one example of how you can estimate differences of the same functions using the mean value theorem. You can do this with a wide range of expressions, not just with the square roots that we had, but if you see any differences whatsoever. It's a very, very interesting and useful strategy. The next example, and the last example we'll have today, is showing how the mean value theorem can actually say something about the roots of a given polynomial. So this polynomial here, we're going to claim, never has two roots in the interval 0, 1. That is the closed interval 0, 1. Regardless of what value m takes on. Let's see why. We notice that this function is continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere, so we can use the mean value theorem here. And we'll suppose otherwise. Suppose we actually had two points in the closed interval 0, 1, call them a and b, so that f of a and f of b were both 0. Then again, by the mean value theorem, we'd have information about a derivative. Then we have this point C somewhere in the open interval AB, assuming A is less than B, which we can assume by picking one of them to be less than the other, such that F prime of C is zero because zero is the slope between A F of A and B F of B. Uh, okay, so F prime of C is zero, but F prime of C is three C squared minus three, which is three times the quantity C squared minus one. Okay, uh, but C is strictly in the interval AB, which is self sits inside of the closed interval 0, 1. So Z, C has to be between 0 and 1 strictly, which means 0 is less than C squared is less than 1. And so C squared minus 1 is between negative 1 and 0 strictly. There's no way it's ever going to be 0. Okay, so that's a problem since f prime of c is 0 itself. Contradiction. So it's impossible for us to have these two roots in the closed interval 0, 1. So three different ways to use the mean value theorem to do estimations and to see things about roots of polynomials. And these are just two examples of a wide range of uses of this really cool and interesting theorem.